What the hell was that? Nora said, picking herself back up. I have a feeling the Enclave found us again, and this time they mean business. I said as I too got back to my hooves and ran over my saddlebags. I quickly removed the combat armor I'd been wearing since I arrived in Hoofington, and placed it with the barding and duster that Wingnut modified for me. Once that was finished, I pulled out my weapons and started to arm myself. It felt wonderful to pull out Mom's plasma rifle again, followed by Dreamwalker, and finally the sword I'd been entrusted with by Gigi and Tonto before their deaths. I slipped Misery back into its holster and pulled Mom's plasma rifle out and smiled. The carrier's back, bitches. Slipping on my saddlebags as Zora pulled out her energy spear, she said, You ready for this? I popped my neck and grinned. Hell yeah. I opened the door and ran out onto the deck, Aura following as we ran into chaos. Smaller pegasus pulled around armored carriages were flying around the bitter cob, firing down on the ship. Power armored pegasi were also attacking the ship. Sunspot was on one of the bigger guns firing up at the two smaller moving carriages. Elliot was doing the same. Gunny was nowhere to be seen. No, wait, never mind. He was on the biggest gun, laughing his ass off. Gunny be showing you how it's done. Take that and that. <laughs> he yelled as the huge plasma cannon fired. I watched as the huge green ball of plasma flew into one of the carriages. The entire thing vanished into a flash of green light and goo. I didn't have any more time to watch Gunny blow up Pegasi as I had my own trouble. Solstice was on the deck, fighting a few pegasi who managed to land on it. Three more were a few feet away from us, their laser rifles ready to fire. I drew Dreamwalker, aimed, and opened fire. The bark of the Desert Eagle sounded like music to my ears. The bullets tore through the armor of the first pegasus, who was only a few feet away. He went down in a spray of blood. Dreamwalker barked again as I shot him twice more. Aura flew past me her energy spear glowing as she attacked the second pegasus. I took aim with a third, squeezing the trigger, and smiled as I heard Dreamwalker sing. The third pegasus, however, was quick and dodged the shot by jumping into the air. Her energy rifles glowing as she fired down at me. I tried to dodge, but uh, it was a little slow. The laser grazed across my flanks, heating up the armor some as it flew past. Clenching my teeth, I took aim again and fired. She dodged again and returned fire. Luckily, the shot went wide and only burned a hole in the deck just behind me. I could tell that this pegasus had more skill than the others. It'd be smarter and more cautious with my actions. I ducked under another shot, took one to my duster, then rolled to avoid another. As I rolled, I swapped Dreamwalker out for Mom's plasma rifle and came out of the roll. I took aim and fired twice. The pegasus wasn't stupid, however. She dodged the first shot, then fired her laser rifle at the second yelling, Gonna have to do better than that! Her taunt died a moment later, however, as Misery came flying through the air, spinning end over end. A blast of plasma had only been a distraction. When I'd grabbed hold of the magic with my rifle, I had also pulled out Misery. The sword had no problem slicing through her armor and burying itself in her chest. She fell to the ground a second later. Pulling Misery out of the dead mare, I turned to see if more enemies were coming. At the moment, the rest were locked in battle with Gunny and his crew, or Solstice, who still had two of her own enemies to face. Two more Pegasi were watching the fight from above, looking utterly confused, however. At first, I wondered why they were just watching there when the three fighting hit me. Solstice was in the same power armor she'd be wearing when she attacked Frosty Summit. Well, it took that armor away from her before she kicked her out of town. She must have taken it back, and now she was dressed in Enclave power armor, and even more, with marks of a lieutenant on her armor. The others had no idea which pegasus were friend or foe. Aura, take out the two in the air, I said as I ran past her. Aura took off as I returned the rifle to my back and let Misery slice through the air. The first pegasus had no idea he was even under attack, not until his wing was cut off clean by my strike. He screamed and fell to the deck, blood pooling under his thrashing body. I twisted Misery around and thrust it into the Pegasus's throat. Solstice took the advantage of my interruption and managed to duck a shot from her other opponent, backflipping using her rear hooves to kick the other under the jaw. Then, while he was falling back, she blasted him with five quick shots from both of her energy rifles. 
His body glowed crimson for a moment, then he was nothing more than ash. Right as the last opponent vaporized, two dead pegasi fell to the ground, holes in their visors. Aura falling to the deck to land on her talons a second later. I looked up at the sky, watching as more of the smaller armored carriages came down from the clouds. Cursing to myself, I swapped misery for the plasma rifle. We've got more of them coming! Gunny came running towards us right as I spoke. Gunny be seeing that? He be thinking about time for y'all to be taking a dive. Doing what now? Solstice asked. Sunspot landed a moment later, followed by Elliot. Captain, we can't take them all out. We need to run. Gunny be knowing it. But first the extras be needing to be hiding down in yonder forest. Gives Gunny and his crew time to be heading them away. He said with a mad grin. How do you know this isn't some kind of plan to help them capture Shadow? Aura asked. You don't. Just gonna have to be trusting old Gunny on this one. If you be going now, it better be giving the crew of Gunny time to get away. He said, looking back at the twins. You know the drills, the plans. Get them off Gunny's ship. Then get the bitter carb to a safe place, quick like. The sooner you be losing the Pegasi, the sooner you can come back and get the others. It's a good idea, I said as I watched the Pegasi coming closer. I don't agree, Laura said, but I cut her off. We need to get away from them. They're after me anyway, so splitting up will help. Solstice and Nora, you both get me down to the forest. And once we're there, we can hide until they come back for us, I said. And how do we know they'll come back? Solstice asked. Sunspot answered. We will come back. Even if Captain Gunny was being an idiot before, he's still a pony that keeps his word. Just get down to the forest, then head for the edge of it. It's only a mile or two away from where we are. Once you get out of the forest, head west, and you'll be in the same town that we are going to meet you in before. Just wait for us there. It should only take a day or so for us to lose the Enclave. I'd learned to trust Sunspot over the past couple of days, even if her captain was less trustworthy. Time for us to be heading out. Don't argue anymore. We don't have the time. The other two looked at me like I was crazy. Aura saying, Shadow, this isn't a good plan. They never are. Now, I'm jumping off this flying boat, and if you two don't want me to go splat, then I guess one of you will have to catch me. I said with a laugh, until my gaze fell on Gunny. Remember, Captain Gunny, you made a deal with me to get me back to New Pegasus. If you don't come back, you'd better hope you died during the fight. If not, I'll make sure no pony ever works with you again. And before any of them could stop me, I climbed under the rail and jumped off the ship. As I fell, I felt a rush of adrenaline flow through me as I watched the tall trees fast approaching. I started to draw on my magic, hoping that I could stop the fall if my friends didn't help me. As the seconds flew by, the trees got closer. I heard massive guns going off over me and saw flashes of green light. I could also hear the engines coming to life as the bitter cob started to fly away. I was starting to feel panic now as the trees grew closer. Then talons took hold of me and brought me to a halt, only a few inches from the tallest tree. Mora was gasping for air as she said, Don't ever do that to me again. Solstice was laughing next to her. <laughs> that was great. I can't believe you just jumped off a ship from that height. Yeah, I'm a stupid daredevil. Now, can you get us down before the Enclave sees us? I said. Too late for that, they're already coming. Nora said as she dove into the trees and towards a massive moss-covered forest floor. If we see if we can lose them in the trees, though. Not a bad idea. Most are scared of this forest, Solstice said as she followed Aura, winding through the trees. That's for sure, even before the war. The Everfree was named that for a reason. This place has always been dangerous, and even I'm not happy with having to go near it. It might be more dangerous than fighting the Enclave. Mora said. I don't see how that could be possible. I started to say, then some pony came down on Aura's back, and she was knocked right into one of the trees. When she was hit, she was forced to let go of me, and I screamed as I fell towards the ground. Lucky for me, the ground was soft enough for my fall. It didn't do much damage, more than bruise a few places on my body. It still hurt. A second later, Solstice was thrown to the ground, a bloody hole in her right wing. Aura hit the ground a moment later. A nasty cut on her head, and she was knocked out. 
Before I could take in what happened, the frost-colored Pegasus, Captain Strife, loomed over me. She was alone and was only wearing combat armor instead of the power armor I'd seen her in before. She was grinning at me, like she'd just won some kind of prize. Well, look at this. We have a runaway Pegasus and a traitor to the Grand Pegasus Enclave, a vile griffin, and the little cunt herself, the courier. I am so very glad to have finally found you, Shadow. I spat a little blood at her, saying, Oh, look, the Frost Queen finally found me. Took you long enough. So what can I do for you, Strife? Want a stick of gum? Oh, wait, that's your brother's department. I wasn't happy to see her. Both my friends were hurt. Gunny and his crew were flying off to lead the Enclave away. And I wasn't sure I could fight her. I wouldn't have much of a choice, though, so I put on my best bravado and watched the icy bitch as she aimed her battle saddle at me. I've been tracking you for a while now, Courier. You've been a pain in my family's side for a while, and it's time you pay the price. She said in her icy voice. If you say so. But I don't see how I've been a pain for your family. I did kill your dad and all, though to be fair, I didn't know who he was or even care much. I said, putting on an attitude that screamed I didn't give two shits. I mean, his friends and him were plotting against my family and sending the sins after me just to steal something that was mine, so he kind of got what he deserved. Keep your mouth shut about my father, Strife started to say, but I kept going. Then there's Winterfrost, I said, looking back at her as I paced back and forth a little. He did attack me twice, both times ending miserably. It's pathetic if you ask me. You'd think a little packaged delivery pony like me would be easy to take in. Now he has to rely on his sister to help? Just to capture little old me? By the way, I have a postcard addressed to him from me. It says, and I quote, Fuck you, you dickless pansy. At least try to seem like you're actually trying to capture me rather than waste the valuable lives of your troops. Her icy smile returned as she said, You can try to antagonize me all you want, but it won't work. I rolled my eyes. Then there's you. Really? Come on. You're a captain in the Grand Pegasus Enclave. It's sad that the only thing you've been able to do is put up wanted posters and try and attack a few sky pirates. Then I heard you were looking for me. I figured that maybe, just maybe, some pony like you would at least seem like a threat. But I guess I shouldn't have expected much. I mean, you did leave Stratus to join up with Thunderhead. I guess I just couldn't cut it with the better ponies. So you had to resort to working with weaker ones just to get higher up in the ranks rather than fizzle out in your own turf. I saw one of her eyes twitch as I spoke, but she didn't let her anger show. Oh, Shadow Star, you have no idea what I've done to earn my place in the Enclave. Do you want to know the reason why I want to join Thunderhead? Does it really matter what I want? I'm sure you're going to tell me anyway. You're the bad guy, it's what you do, I said with a smile. She ignored my jab and told me. My grandfather needed a spy back east, so he sent me. You think you know my grandfather? Uo did speak a little while ago, I believe. He has a message for you. Oh, you mean that shadowy pony with your grandfather? I said with a small chuckle. You should really tell him to get his throat checked. The poor stallion sounds like a ghoul. Anyway, what's with this children message what her smile got wider as she said his message is mostly for aquila and it's this long live the children the deal is off my eyes went wide for a split second then i dodged to one side as she fired her battle rifle at me i was ready for an attack however my magic was already wrapping around the plasma rifle i rolled and took aim and went into stats Firing three shots back at the Pegasus. She, too, dodged and returned fire. My barding took two of the magical blasts of energy from her rifles. Luckily, my barding was enough to keep them from doing much more than that, but making my colt hot. I switched the plasma rifle out for Dreamwalker, took aim, and fired. Again, using sats, but she managed to dodge the shots once more. She started to laugh. Your sats won't work on me. She pointed at a small gem in her combat armor. 
little gift for my grandfather. If you want to win, you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. As she was talking, I did as she said and took aim, firing twice. She tried to dodge those two shots too, but I wasn't aiming for her. I was aiming for the tree branch above her. The first bullet split the bark in the tree. The second glowed with black light and exploded on impact. The branch snapped and fell right where Strafe dodged. She looked up at the last second and tried to dodge the large branch too, but wasn't quite fast enough. It slammed into her wing and one half of her body. She screamed as she was thrown towards the ground and the branch nearly pinned her. Just then, Aura started to wake up, rubbing her bleeding head. What the hell happened? Can't talk right now. Check on Solstice. She looks hurt. I said as I aimed Dreamwalker at Strife, who was pulling herself away from the fallen branch. I noticed that the branch had broken the ground open, almost like there was a cavern underneath it. Or moved over to check on Solstice, who was moaning a few meters away. Strife glared at me and pointed Dreamwalker at her. She spat on the ground. Going to kill me, huh? I bet you don't have the... I fired a bullet an inch from her head. It's my turn to talk, Strife. Fuck you. But I fired again, this time getting closer to her. I don't want to hear another word out of you until you explain who that pony on the monitor was, and what you meant by that message earlier, I said. And I want to know how you knew about Aquila. Something under me seemed to move, cutting my speech off. I looked down and saw something was starting to poke out of the forest floor. I took a step back as I watched a vine poke out of the ground. It was an odd plant with green and blue on the vines, and small flowers on the ends. The sight of them moving like they were filled me with fear, though I wasn't sure why. Strife saw them too, and her cocky demeanor changed to fear. Fuck no. I don't care what you want from me anymore, Courier. I'm not sticking around to let those things near me. Shoot me if you want, but I'm leaving. Before I could comprehend what she was saying, she finished freeing herself and took to the air. I pointed Dreamwalker up at her, yelling, Where the hell do you think you're going? Before I could fire a shot at her, though, Aura pulled Dreamwalker back, saying, No time for her shadow, we gotta run. I looked over at her, seeing that she had a bleeding and moaning solstice on her back. What's going on? Aura pushed me back to one of those vines as it shot towards me, just missing my face. She jumped over it, then took my hoof and started to run away from the vines, yelling, Don't let those hit you. It's killing joke. Killing Joke was something that I did remember hearing about and reading in the Wasteland Survival Guide. I knew that they could do horrible things to you that were almost always permanent or deadly, most of the time. So, I did what any sane pony would do. I screamed and ran along with Aura. The vines started to pop out of the ground as we ran, each one trying to take hold of us. Aura pulled out her spear as a wall of them tried to block our path the tip glowing bright green as she slashed the air, cutting them down quickly. I'd already pulled out Misery and used it to slash at the large vines as we went. It was hard to keep them from touching us, though. Each time one would fall, another would be right there, ready to attempt to grab hold. Luckily for me, I was quicker than the vines. Aura, however, was barely able to keep hold of Solstice and fight the vines. At least six times I thought she was going to fall to the killing joke, but she managed to avoid them at the last second. Finally, I could see the light ahead at the edge of the forest as it came into a view. Aura, we're almost out, I yelled as we ran for the forest. I can't keep holding Solstice, Aura yelled as she started to fall behind. I can take her. I can get her that far, I said as I took hold of the Moan and Pegasus with magic and pulled her off Aura's back. The killing joke seemed to be getting worse, and I wasn't sure how they were following us. Their plans... How could they be keeping up with us? I saw why a second later, as more broke through the ground to my right. A few more came out of the trees, and one even split through a rock. We were in a large area of the things, from what I could tell. I was about out of the overfree forest, when I heard something that made my blood grow cold. Aura screamed. No! I threw a solstice past the edge of the forest, then twisted around, readying my explosion spell. I stopped as I saw what happened to Aura. She'd been caught by a few of the killing joke, and they were wrapping themselves around her. Her beak was open in a scream of pain as they tightened around her torso, paws, talons, and neck. 
I let my anger fill me as I blasted the vines with every ounce of power that I could. Most of the vines broke away, but the one holding onto her neck tightened. A glow started to show around Aura as she gasped for air. I started to draw on my power again, ready to blast the last vine before I could do anything more to her. But right as I was about to cast the spell, two things happened at the same time. The glow around Aura, almost blinding now, and the last killing joke threw over my head and out of the forest. As Aura was flying over me, another plant came out of nowhere and slapped me so hard in the face that I lost my spell and was thrown out after her. I felt something hot on my face from where the vine hit me and heard something snap, followed by agony from my horn, almost like something just snapped it off. I rolled across the ground a few times before coming to a halt next to Solstice and the still glowing aura. My mind went blank from the pain and I slipped into a dreamless sleep. You know how at some, some ponies say, you should watch what you say, or that the universe has a way of messing with you? Well, I don't know how long I was out, but when I came to, I found myself looking up at Sunspot, who was shaking me. Shadow, you need to wake up. What happened? I asked as the hybrid helped me sit up. I was going to ask you the same thing. Solstice looks like she's been shot at least twice in the right wing, and I can't find Aura anywhere. Did that Pegasus do something to her? Sunspot asked. Huh? I asked, rubbing my eyes and wondering why I felt so strange. She flew away. I didn't see any others once the killing joke attacked. Then, what she said hit me. What do you mean Aura's missing? She was with me when we got out of the forest. What do you mean she ran away? A Pegasus mare is with you right now, and she's out cold. Sunspot said, pointing a paw at where Elliot was putting restraints on a black mare. Wait a second. Who's that? I asked. I didn't see her when we got hit by the killing joke. Oh no. The killing joke got Aura. She was glowing, but she was thrown out of the forest. Did it kill her? We just found the Pegasus apart from her. It's just Solstice and you, Sunspot said. Don't worry, though. We'll find her. Once we wake that bitch over there up, we'll find out what she did to Aura. She paused, then asked, Wait, did you say the killing joke got to you? I nodded. Yeah, but I don't think the one that hit me had enough time to do anything to me. I feel fine apart from a headache and a few tingles. She looked me over. We should still check up on you, once we get you back to the Bitter Cob. We managed to lose the Enclave, but Gunny wants us out of here as soon as they... possible, before they start to check near the forest again. I got to my hooves and groaned. Okay, we need to find Aura first. Elliot looked over to me. We will. Miss Mare's waking up now. Let's see what she knows before we go back. I looked over and took in the mare, who I didn't see before the killing joke attacked. She was tall for a mare, with a pure black coat, even darker than my own, with a blood-red mane and tail. Her wings had a red hue to them, and her front and back hooves had white ends on them. There was even a white spot on her nose. Her cutie mark was odd, too. There was a heart with a griffin's talon in the center of it. Then the mare started to open her eyes. I saw that they were icy blue. When she saw me looking at her in a lighter voice than I expected, she said, Shadow, what happened? My jaw dropped as I realized the impossible sight in front of me. Aura? Is that you? Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Last action hero. Oh gosh, are you okay? Never mind, it's just a flesh wound. You've become pretty skilled in the midst of battle and now have the chance to randomly perform unique finishers on whatever foe you encounter. Note, the percentage of this chance fluctuates constantly and is not measured by your luck attribute. 